Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Welcome everyone, no matter where you be viewing this. It's still our, our great privilege and an honor to, to present this Mass um, for you all. My brothers and sisters, we pray ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries of our Lord's love for us. Take a moment now to quiet down our hearts, allow ourselves to be embraced in His divine love. We ask for forgiveness for any sins we may have committed. But we also ask our Lord to touch those areas of our lives that might need His healing touch at this moment. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace. They may fervent in hope, faith, and charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is taken from the Book of Wisdom. The Book of Wisdom was written about 50 years before Christ. In one lengthy section of this book, the author looks back to the wonderful things God did for the Jewish people during the Exodus. In today's passage from that section, the author speaks directly to God with words of praise. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who 
have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But through you, our master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. We continue today to read from the 8th chapter of the letter to the Romans, in which St. Paul discusses the role of God's Spirit in our life. Today's brief reading gives us a remarkable insight into prayer. letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will, the word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus proposed another parable of the crowd saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, do you not sow, did you not sow good seed into your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, no. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat and flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Teacher opened his Bible. He turned to the Sermon on the Mount and he read these words of Jesus to his class. You are like salt for the whole human race. You are like light for the whole world. The teacher closed the Bible, sat on the edge of his desk, and he said to the students, Wouldn't it be great if we could weed out the church? Wouldn't it be great if we could throw out all half-hearted Christians? Think of the impact the church would have on the world if it had only committed people in it. A million committed Christians is a lot better witness to Jesus than 25 million half-hearted Christians. Suddenly the students began to see his point and they began to nod in agreement. But a girl in the back of the room raised her hand and said, I agree with you and what you say, but who would decide? Who's to be weeded out and who's to stay? Flurry of hands went up. One boy said, I think almost anybody could decide that. I can give you a whole list of names right now. <laughs> well, this raises a question. Would it be good to periodically weed out the church? Would it help everyone, even half-hearted Christians? Would it shake people up and make them more committed? Would it help the church become what Jesus called it to be, salt of the earth and light of the world? Today's parable of the weeds and the wheat may shed some light on these questions. The weed referred to by Jesus was a curse to the Palestinian farmers. Ancient writers described it as kind of a fool's wheat. In the early stages of its growth, it looked very similar to the real wheat. This was one of the reasons that the owner told his workers to wait until harvest time, because they might pull up some real wheat thinking it was fool's wheat. And it's right here that the parable sheds light on the question about weeding out half-hearted Christians from the church. 
Just as the workers might mistake real wheat for fool's wheat, so we might mistake committed Christians for half-hearted Christians. Even more tragically, we might condemn someone who seemed to be a half-hearted Christian, but had the potential to become a committed Christian. The point is this. Judgment is not ours to pass. Judgment should be passed only at the end of a person's life and by God, not in the middle of it by people. That's such an important point. Paul stresses this important point in his first letter to the Corinthians. He writes, you should not pass judgment on anyone before the right time comes. Final judgment must wait until the Lord comes. He will bring light to the dark secrets and expose the hidden purpose of people's minds. Here's the risk of passing judgment on someone before the right time. Years ago, a retired lay missionary and his wife spent their final days on a tiny farm outside of town. The couple worked very hard growing vegetables and raising chickens. They couldn't eat all they grew, so they sold their surplus to the townspeople. After a while, the townspeople began to gossip about how cheap the retired missionary and his wife were. They weigh every vegetable and they count every egg twice, said one of the townsmen. They wouldn't give you an extra potato or an extra egg to save themselves. I wonder, what kind of missionaries were they? Well, eventually, the missionary's wife died. And only then did the real truth come out. Every cent of the couples earned from selling their vegetables and eggs went to two elderly widows who depended on them for their sole support. This brings us back to the important point Paul makes in his letter to the citizens of Corinth. It's the same point that Jesus makes in his parable. You should not pass judgment on anyone before the right time comes. Final judgment must wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light the dark secrets. And so we have to be content to live in a world and a church where saints and sinners live side by side. A church full of saints might be a nice church, but it wouldn't be Christ's church. As someone once put it, the Christian church is a society of sinners. It's the only society in the world in which membership is based on a single qualification, that the candidate be unworthy of his membership. And so we close with prayer. Lord, help us realize that the church isn't a showcase for saints, but is a shelter for sinners. Prevent us from passing judgment on anyone, especially members of our own family and members of our own church. Help us to take to heart Jesus' words when he says, do not judge others and God will not judge you. Because the measure we use to judge others is the measure you, God, will use for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I'll read my little little spiel for all of those who can't be here, but um, would really like to receive Christ in spiritual communion. And a reminder that the church encourages frequent, even daily Holy Communion, but if at any time we cannot go to Mass and are out of this season of the COVID virus, we can still unite ourselves to the Eucharist through making the spiritual communion. And by making that act of spiritual communion, we express our faith in Christ, real present in the Eucharist, and we ask him to unite himself with us. And so once again, we'll use an act of spiritual communion written by St. Alphonsus de Liguori. He wrote, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I didn't think I'd learn about this mic. So one of the options that we can use for our creed is we can do the Apostles' Creed, and so that's what we'll do today. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confident that our Lord will listen to our prayers, we now present our petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the Church of Cleveland, may the Holy Spirit enlighten and inspire the leaders of our church until a new shepherd for our diocese is named. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For our military, police, and first responders, may they be treated respectfully as they bring safety and security to our world. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For our scientists and researchers, may God give them fortitude, knowledge, and resources to find a cure for this virus and other diseases that plague our world, we pray to the Lord. For all of us, may God's patience and kindness enrich and inspire the love that we share within our families and communities, we pray to the Lord. For Holy Family Parish, may we continue to spread the goodwill of the Lord through our kind and caring words and acts of mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, may they share in the heavenly banquet of the Lord. We pray in particular for the recently deceased members of Holy Family Parish, and for whom this Mass is intended, Robert Kekulik. We also remember all those other Masses where we have intentions at the 430, Thomas and Maryland and Tom Kapinski, the 730, uh, the living and deceased of Holy Family Parish, the 930, John and Handa Isak, and at the 1130, Dane Barr. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We join our prayers as we unite them through our prayers, our Blessed Mother, for peace in our country, in our cities, in our homes, and the continual protection of all of us. As we pray, Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good among his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel. So that what each of us has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened a way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glories without and we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Help that we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, the Church of Cleveland, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, gracious to grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy you will always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory and the power are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be you. be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have been viewed with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our announcements, Saturday confessions and all parish activities remain suspended until further notice. We'll continue to provide a recording of the private 6 p.m. vigil mass on the website. And please refer to our website for ongoing updates. School may be out for the summer, but it's not too early to plan for next year. Please go to the Holy Family School Parma.org to take a virtual tour of our school. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed week.